Sorry. Uh, no worries. <laughs> Second thing is, I know nothing about banking, so um, uh, I worked for Apple Bank for a long time, but I know nothing about banking, so I'm going to talk about the technology and not about uh, all the banking and stuff, except for one slide where I'll explain my interpretation of what we do at the, at the bank. Um, uh, short on my background and why I am here. My name is Niels Littori. Anyway, I'm working for uh, uh, <laughs> private financing, which is our word for mortgages. Hypotheken. Yeah, not uh, not the, the, the small lending, but the, the larger lending. Hypotheken. Private. Hypotheken. Private mortgages. Yeah, not the uh, uh, business ones. Uh, our department is 150 people. So <laughs> your company is 150. Our department is 150. <laughs> So we're You're doing the same, same thing, right? <laughs> we're doing something completely different. We do, uh, we do Java applications uh, developed by, say, 150 people minus the six running the platform. So it's 144 people doing uh, the, the Java applications. Well, it's not only Java. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. And I'm responsible. Well, responsible is a big word, but I'm working on the non-functionals. So as I said, I know nothing about banking. I'm going to explain the mortgages process in a second. And I brought my colleague here who knows everything about mortgages and everything about the process of mortgages and all that stuff. So if you have any questions on that, I only talk about the non-functionals. The non-functionals, of course, is, is the, 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 the trivial ones like the, the reliability, reliability, availability, scalability, security, performance. But it also means that um, we, we run the platform. I, uh, we have an, an, an IT infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure uh, department which delivers all the components and we use the components to build the larger um, runtime platforms. And one of the runtime platforms that we run is Mesos Marathon, so not DCOS. And that is actually the reason why I'm here. Because uh, Lars asked me, can you give me a presentation on, on the Mesos Marathon, the role of Mesos Marathon, not DCOS? And why we do that and why not DCOS? So my first question to you is, who's using DCOS open source? Mm -hmm. That's not many people. Who's using DCOS enterprise edition? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, good, very good. And who's using Mesa Marathon in the raw, the raw environment? Nobody, great. <laughs> so I can tell you, you anything I want, <laughs> and you will probably believe me, right? I hope. Um, so let's, let me start with a timeline on how we decided to go for uh, a Mesos Marathon plat platform. Um, it started, I, I, the dates are probably not completely right because I said 2015 spring boot, what's that? But it was probably I think 2014, I, was, I saw a job offer for a company that asked for somebody doing spring boot applications. I never heard of it, so if you never heard of it, you're going to look into it, and uh, <laughs> I found it very interesting with the technology. That's easy. That is the way you should do it. What we do, what we do, the bank. Yeah, we're a bank. We're, we're dinosaurs. We do old stuff. So we ran huge applications on top of WebSphere. Anybody remember WebSphere? Yeah. Don't we still? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're also old. <laughs> <laughs> You can't see him, I can see him. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, anyway, so we use those huge but the Spring Boot application is a Microsoft, it's a small thing. It delivers just the functionality that this one application should deliver and not more and not less. But you need to run so many of them. So, how are we going to, uh, to do this? And of course, me being at the bank, I saw the uh, the ad in the paper, the advert in the paper, and uh, I, I just dreamt on and I went to do uh, WebShare again. But then on 2016, um, my, my colleague from the online department had a problem. And I worked for the online department. Online is the, the internet banking. So it's your app on your uh, telephone and it's the internet banking on your, uh, uh, on your PC. And I worked for them for a long time. So I worked together with uh, my colleague there and they have a problem in that they run WebShare, but they run something like three large environments, really large environments, and every, every uh, environment has about something like 280 applications. And 280 applications, you cannot scale. You cannot horizontally scale anymore. 
because the vertical machine is completely full. You can put another machine next to it, but it's full. You can put the next machine next to it, but it's full. Because 280 applications, it has to, to be the same applications in the same uh, environment. So then we're going to look at a um, microservice <laughs> architecture where they could overload applications from the online platform. And we started to look into it uh, together, me and uh, my colleague from uh, online. I'm, of course, working for the mortgages uh, department. Um, so we did a POC, we worked on it together for about um, three, four, five months and it was very interesting and then the online department decided to stop. They did something very, very strange, I will not talk about it, it's called PCF, but it's, uh, they decided to, to go for something, something else, there's a good reason for that. But we wanted to go on because we had this, this platform and we didn't have an application. And then there was a, a small um, project, it's called Hippolab. He posts the Dutch word for mortgages, he could take it. Lab, of course, it's the English word for uh, laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> it was a group of people doing some experimental stuff on, uh, on mortgages. Uh, mortgage is a very simple thing. You buy a house, you get money, we get money from you every, uh, every month and for 30 years. Uh, I'll explain that in the next week, I hope. <laughs> 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 um, but um, they were going to do something outside that mortgage process. They were going to give you insight in pricing of a house. How, how, how you, your marketer, your real estate agent, they ask for a, a, an asking price. How, 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 how valid is that price? And we have all the data, we have lots of data. So we were going to process that data <coughs> and give you an idea on how much a, a, a house is really worth. So if you ask for it for this price, it's probably going to be sold in three months time. If you ask more, it's probably going to be sold in a half year's time. If you ask much more, it's going to be never sold. Um, so we had a, a red, a yellow, and a green um, uh, place where the, the, the amount of money plus the, the, the time you expect it to, uh, to, be, on the, uh, to, to be on the market. Uh, that uh, together with all the things that we have at Funda, you know Funda? Yeah. Yeah. All the English people know Funda. Yeah. <laughs> so we do the same thing with the house, we, 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 we scrape the sides. They use open source in CLS. There you go. Good. Thank you. <laughs> wise people, wise people. Thanks, Matt. Very, very, very wise people. Anyway, you these scrape guys... the side. Is there a delta? Sorry? Is there a delta between Funda and your model? My, my hearing is not very good. Is so. there a delta between the Funda data and your model? Of course. Okay. Uh, what, we do, what they will never do is give you insight in that data, in that pricing model, <coughs> in that the way they price uh, things and the, the way they expect. Uh, um, um, and, and that was the idea for us was, if, you, if you're in that app, we know you're looking for a house. We know the price range you're looking for in the house. Of course, we're a bank, huh? we do nothing for, for free. Um, anyway, they were looking for a runtime platform and they didn't want to run on the uh, <laughs> So finally, we had a launching customer, we had a platform, so it was mid-2016 uh, already. And we, 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 we had the platform, so we didn't have to deliver the platform, they could just run it immediately. And of course, uh, once you have um, your launching customer on your platform, it doesn't take very long for everybody, every of the 150 developers says, well, I don't want to work on web I want to work on something nice, I want to work on something hip. And, uh, so everybody moved to, uh, to, this, to, to this platform. So today everybody's running on that platform. We still have three uh, large applications on WebShare, but most of it is running on um, our, our basic smartphone platform. Yeah. And then something not so nice happened, is that um, there was a project called Robotics. It has nothing to do with uh, mortgages, absolutely nothing to do with mortgages. But my boss said, we are hip and we can do this. And the bank said, we need a department that can do it. And well, my boss said, we can do it. So <laughs> we had to run suddenly um, uh, Robotics. And Robotics is a, a package that you just buy from a company, in our case in, uh, in Denmark, it's called Kofax. Um, um, and we dockerized it. We said we, we don't want to run it on. on they were expecting to, to have an environment, say 150 servers, and we don't want to run it on, on, on that uh, amount of hardware. So can you dockerize it and then run it on the platform? And the uh, the company helped us to to make uh, everything run in Docker. So we had a large Docker environment uh, on there as well in that time. We still have, of course. And now, of course, everybody's using. Uh, Using the platform, so it's uh, it's quite a quite a large uh, environment uh, now. It's not as large as, as yours in the sense that uh, you run large jobs. We run 
a lot of small jobs, which is easily managed. Uh, and as you can see, um, we were talking. We, we are talking about DCOS at the moment. <laughs> we're moving away from the uh, <laughs> from the Mesos Marathon that now is too <laughs> simple to understand uh, applications <laughs> that run together. So this is my interpretation of the Morgs process. Yeah, can you please shut, uh, shut your eyes and <laughs> at least shut your mouth and don't, don't you know, say that it's wrong. It's, it is wrong. But to give you an idea of the, um, of the, uh, the applications that we run, we have something called this, there's an orientation phase, there's an advice phase, there's an acceptance phase, there's um, um, and two other phases I'll explain in a second. Let's start with the orientation phase. If you want to buy a house, the first thing you want to know is uh, how much can I borrow, how much is it going to cost me. And that's the only thing you want to know. And of course we want to know way more from you if we get serious. We want to know your income, we want to know your, well, your assets, your, your whatever you have. It's a long, long, long list. Uh, if, you, if you want to know the whole list, ask uh, Robert Jan. <laughs> this is easy for me. I can also <laughs> ask him. So the orientation phase is the quick one, it's the simple one. And um, as you maybe know, in 2013, 1st of January 2013, the law changed in Holland that in the old days you didn't pay for your mortgage advice. But then on the 1st of January 2013, you had to pay for your advice. So, uh, well, if you're in, in, in home, you probably know why, and I'm not going to explain. So that's the second phase. At one point, we, you're, we go to the advice phase. You are probably more interested in, um, in, 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 in really getting a mortgage from the Rabobank, and not from a different company. And we are going to really ask you about uh, what's your income, what's your this, that, and the other. And then we want to pr have proof. So we want to see all the uh, documents, document uploading, all that stuff. So you can already feel the application there, right? So the first application is what we call the rode loper, <laughs> the red carpet. <laughs> yeah, you come in to the bank, and that's your first calculation. And the first calculation is, is very simple. How much do you do you earn? Do you do you say you earn? <laughs> we don't care if it's true. And uh, this is the amount of money you can you can borrow. And then the next click will be the Larger calculations. So there's a lot of stuff in the, <coughs> say the functional stuff there. Then the advice phase, the same thing. Acceptance, I think I can safely say, is a .NET application. Is that true? Yep. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And then there's something I, I, I like the last one, so I put smiley behind it. But before that, I have the, uh, to explain the previous one. It's called service and behavior, which is the 30 years that you pay your mortgage. Yeah, we don't see you anymore, but we get your money. Huh? Uh, so 30 years you're paying your mortgage. Um, there's an application called the RAM, it's regular asset management. Regular asset management. And then the last phase is special asset management. And what's special about special asset management for the Dutch people is bijzonder beheer. Bijzonder beheer maybe, you recognize more than special asset management. Bijzonder beheer is when you don't pay your mortgage, you get some special interest. <laughs> So especially those, those last two, and especially Sun, is an application that we're going to onboard uh, now. And um, there is, the, they have some problems, again, they have some problems, and DCS is the solution to that. So we can't run a message marathon for them. So we have the functional applications. As I said, the, uh, the apps that support the, uh, the, 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 all the phases. We have some supporting applications, applications you will never see as a customer. Well, that is, uh, well, let's say calculations, but also uh, the Nederlandse Bank, the ECB, European Central Bank requirements. There's all kinds of stuff I'm, I'm not going to explain because you're probably going to say, oh, those, those banks, they have to... Uh, it's not us, it's the uh, DMB, the ECB, and the AFM, which is just down the road from here. I saw. And then, um, yeah, the, the thing that I like is that there's lots of other applications, and uh, I don't know what they do, because... Every day I look at my platform and I say, what's this? This is new, I have no clue what it is. I, I don't care what it is, it's just 10 applications just started. And it's a Bitcoin miner probably. <laughs> yeah. I think you know what, they all have fancy names and he knows the fancy names, so it must be, uh, fancy <laughs> it must be fancy. Of course we have robotics on there, as I explained, and uh, we have some infra components. Uh, and this is typically something that we, my, my uh, group also uh, writes the software for. 
So we, we do write software, we don't run the platform, uh, only run the platform. So we have an authenticator, we have a configuration server, we have a security environment all written for message marketing and around message marketing to make it more secure. So why, um, why message marketing? Why, why not something else? Well, in, in 2016 we had a, a very simple requirement. We wanted to offload the online department and we wanted to offload our department and we write Java applications. That was the main thing, the only thing. And I don't want to run a Docker environment if I can run a native Java environment. So one of the things that we, we looked into uh, the early Kubernetes, Nomad, maybe you've heard of a Nomad, mm -hmm. actually core. Oh, yeah. uh, there's some, some Docker runtime environments in, the, in that time. But Mesos and Marathon, the, the, the combination, could run native applications, Java and any other application if you want. Java is the only thing that we are interested in. And .NET, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Docker has to be possible to run on that platform. Because we, and we anticipated already that uh, some people would, would write in a language that was not Java and <coughs> at least you have to have Docker. So it had to be native, preferred. If you can't do preferred Java, then do uh, Docker. And Mesos, Mesos and Marathon was the only one who could do that. Yeah? So the alternatives, well, we looked into uh, Kubernetes, Nomad, OpenShift, and I put PCM on there with the question mark. PCM, let's not talk about PCM. <laughs> Um, more pros and cons. Um, the, the pro, it was a very mature product in 2016. It was a very mature product, and that is amazing because there was a point. I, I don't remember the details, but I remember the feeling I had. There was a panic that there was something wrong in my in my in my environment, and it is potentially wrong in my environment. And I thought, oh shit! If this happens in this way, then and then I looked at the documentation, and it was. Of course, they thought about it. There's a, a switch for that, and you could just switch it on, and it was every problem I, I could think of. It was already solved in that software, so I, I was very happy with that. Um, it's very flexible. We can manipulate it. We like to manipulate all the software that we uh, huh? we want to get the good things, but then we manipulate it. We put an authenticator in front of it. We put the configuration in a different way. We install it in a different way. Uh, we are a bank. Uh, we don't have internet access. Um, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Sometimes you're at the department and you do illegal stuff. <laughs> so we do have it. Uh, no, no, we don't have it. <laughs> so was Taco, we did an air gap installation. We're not doing video tonight. Okay. Hmm? We're not the video recording. No, good, good. good. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we, did, we did an air gap installation just to see that it could be done, but it, it's not necessary because uh, we do have uh, internet access. I, can, I can't uh, tell you. Anyway, there were also some cons, and these are the cons that um, the online department. Uh, the, the, the reason for the, for, for, the, for the online department was to stop with the mass marathon. The difference between the online department and us is we do mortgages. We have 150 people doing mortgages. Every single one is doing mortgages, which basically means if you break an application of a different group, of a different team, you will have to fix it or the other team will have to fix it. But you fix it together. Yeah, you don't break it. And online is you have, well, Mobile and, and, and desktop. You have uh, now. I'm going to think about all the all the, the, the English words: savings, um, investments, uh, payments, sparen we lekker betalen. They have a lot. And, and savings has nothing to do with investments. And investments has nothing to do with whatever. So. Uh, uh, they have to have a multi-tenant model, and Mesa's Marathon itself does not have multi-tenancy. Yeah. Maybe the ECS EE has it, I'm not sure, but it has no multi-tenancy. It has no login, so also, obviously, no role-based access control. Uh, you are allowed to see only, the, only, only things that you are allowed to see, and you're only allowed to break the things that you are allowed to break, and not of your uh, colleagues. Um, we don't need this. Because everybody has the same rights. Well, not everybody. <laughs> I have more rights than, uh, huh? than the rest of my colleagues, of course. But most of the people have the same rights. They can break each other's applications. And we don't have a multi tenancy problem in our department. And of course, there's no standard service registry and discovery. Like on DCS, anybody knows? 
That's we do use the, the MIS of DNS uh, service discovery? Or yes, or? a lot. Uh, well, but there, there's also a lot of packages that complement that. Trade that? That complement that. Yeah. Or you get a lot yeah. of answer out of the box. It's Anyway, we wrote our own, we wrote our own, we wrote our own. <laughs> As I said, we wrote our own. And we flexible. That's the way we work. We, we don't pay you money for the EE version, we just put some more, 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 more people on it, right? So this is what we have. This is the, uh, the architecture that we have uh, at the moment. And um, I, I, I should say that we are the Mavericks of the Java Bank, we don't kind of think, hey, you're not allowed to make a picture of my architecture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I said, we, we are the Mavericks of the Java Bank, and we do all kinds of, of things that uh, the Java Bank does not do. Uh, so the, the whole of the Java Bank uses Splunk, <coughs> we use Elk. <laughs> yeah. The whole of the Java Bank uses PCF, we use MySysFine. Just because you can. Okay. Because and we are running a platform, and they are thinking about running a platform, right? <laughs> so that's a quite a, a big difference. We have been in production for three years. They are sort of thinking about running a platform. Anyway, what we have is, um, if you look uh, on this side, is the service discovery uh, side, the service discovery and service access side, uh, side. We have traffic. You know, traffic. Traffic is a, a routing uh, software which can do service discovery from Mesos Marathon, from DCOS, from Kubernetes, from whatever, uh, quite a long list. So it has a service-side uh, service event stream with Marathon, and it will, some, if somebody um, deploys an application, it will get a notification from uh, Marathon that something has changed, and it will reconfigure the whole thing, and uh, by accessing this, the star.apps.com, kwx.rabobank.nl um, you, uh, you get to, uh, to the application, the, the, the star obviously being your application, your application dot whatever, you get to your application. Again, we don't need multi-tenancy, so everybody can access everybody's uh, application. You can, of course, um, protect your own application, that not everybody uses it, but that there's a mm. mutual TLS or whatever you want to have. So that's one side. The other side is the uh, Mesos Marathon uh, and environment, and it's called uh, mm.kwx.rabobank.nl. That is the deployment uh, side of it all. And of course, we have written our own deployment scripts, deployment library, deployment. Uh, so we have a, something called a, a, a Git deployment descriptors um, thing, where we, we have you ever seen a, a, a marathon deployment descriptor, a DCS deployment descriptor, it's a JSON file, a large JSON file? Yeah? And what we did is we, we built a structure where you have a, what we call a template, and that's basically your marathon JSON. Mm -hmm. But with the configuration stuff still in a variable. Yeah. So if yeah. you want to run, say, so two instances on, 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 on dev and four in prod, you make a dollar Akkalade open an instance, Akkalade sluiten, eh? translate it to yourself, think about it, whatever you want to use. Um, you make a variable. And then we have on top of that two more files, one is called the defaults. If you don't specify it for a specific runtime environment, it uses the defaults. And then we have another one for a specific environment. So you have your template plus, let's say, your dev environment plus your instances, or actually, it's, uh, yeah, plus your default, sorry on top of them, the defaults. And then the fourth thing that's, uh, that's added is the version of your software. So four things, and that together adds up to one single deployment, and then we have a deployment library which does all the stuff, right? And uh, how it works. He knows how it works because he's written the deployment library. <laughs> I've, I've written the, 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 the way that it all integrates uh, together, and then he, can, he knows how to deploy it to the uh, next marathon. And I think, Taco, you asked me uh, during the, the break, um, the, you thought that we were doing the deployments, that we were doing the stuff, but it's actually the 150 people doing it themselves. They learn from each other how to build that, that deployment descriptor, 
<laughs> it's very simple. You go to the Git repo and you just copy everything and then you add your own stuff uh, in there. So if one person makes a mistake, 150 people make exactly the same mistake. <laughs> it is very difficult to get to, to get them to understand that it's a mistake and that they have to change something. Um, but that's the only thing you have to know. And then the deployment library is, is hiding everything. So it just adds up and then it deploys and it runs. And then you have access to, um, to Mason's Marathon, to Marathon. Mason's also, but to Marathon. And of course, we want to have some sort of um, authentication, role based access control in there. Why? In 2016, nobody at Haberbank had a clue what microservices were, let alone what a microservice platform was, let alone how you do configuration, application configuration. Maybe you've heard of Spring Cloud Config Server, it's a Java thing. Uh, your Java applications can ask the Spring Cloud Config Server what, what their running configuration should be. So in production it's something different than in the dev environment, of course. So nobody had heard about all these, uh, these things. So we didn't have to have any, any protection on the, on the platform. We could just use the bare uh, marathon. But then s people started to understand, hey, there are some passwords in there, and that's not a good idea, and there's, uh, I can get to your applications, and I can check your applications. So we, we, we built our own authenticator. And it's basically the same as the, the DCOS uh, EE version, where you have a plugin into Marathon. You know that underneath DCOS it's still Marathon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, DCOS is just, it's called the admin router, right? It's, uh, it's just an interface to Marathon, so you can still access. If you use DCOS OS, the open source version, you can still get to Marathon without any protection. So if you use the uh, the, the um, uh, what's it called, the OAuth uh, login, you can still bypass the OAuth and get immediately to Marathon, which is very nice for us because then we can deploy, <laughs> but we still have to uh, put the authenticator in, uh, in front of it. And of course uh, they use the Mason Marathon Masters to, uh, to run it on a pool of um, servers. And the pool of servers have different, uh, different slave, different slave types. So in, in Mesos you have a uh, a thing called attributes, I think is the official term. So you can add attributes to your, um, to your system, any attribute you want. And we have one of the attributes that we use is no type. A no type app means you can run a Java application, no type robotics obviously means you can run robotics on those uh, servers. And uh, you use in your deployment descriptor something called a constraint, where you say the no type has to be app, or the no type has to be robotics, or the no type has to be whatever. Um, we run um, Two data centers. That's not entirely true, but in Hadamard we run two data centers, best and Boxful. But we also run Azure and AWS, etc. So we are we are my department is already expanding to Azure and AWS. You can specify a location and then say I want to have my apps uh, divided over the locations. So I have six six um, uh, instances and. Uh, I have two locations, best and box tool, and I want to have them grouped three by three. So not everything is running in best one, not everything is running in, uh, in box tool. Yeah? So there's all kinds of things that they are allowed to use. We, we provide the underlying infrastructure, and the, in the deployment descriptors, if you just... Uh, so you do the, the dispatching between different uh, locations using methods constraints? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, well, my, my colleagues at IT Infra have the, um, the habit, <laughs> not very nice habit, of doing upgrades on systems and, and, and patching and all that stuff, and they do that on a Sunday night when I'm asleep. So uh, and luckily for me, they don't do it in best and box at the same time, but they do them in between 12 and 2 in best, and then 2 to 4 in, uh, in box hall. And uh, both time frames I'm asleep, I hope, normally. Um, <laughs> so everything goes down, and if you, if you didn't do it like that, then everybody would end, every, every application would end up in the location that is set on uh, first, not last, first. Yeah? So if you do best first, then best goes down, everything goes to Boxtel, then the Boxtel, Boxtel goes down, everything goes to best, and everything would be running in best, and nothing would be running in Boxtel, so you have an asymmetry. And of course, not everything it, everything can run in, in, in best, so uh, some application will be hanging and waiting for resources, and when Boxtel comes up, it will uh, start, doing, start, start running in Boxtel again. So it's not completely in balance, but we, we try to do it, uh, do it locally. Yeah, that's the architecture. That's what we're running. It's one of the things that we're running. This is what the authenticator looks like. Um, it's uh, a Java application, obviously running uh, Spring Web Security. At the moment, it's running Spring Cloud Netflix Zool proxy. 
Anybody heard of that? <laughs> no? Good. So I can just bluff that it's, trust me, it is. <laughs> and then there's a plugin into Marathon, and the two together, so the, the Authenticator and the, uh, the Marathon Authentication plugin together do the role based access control. So you're allowed to log in here if you have a certain role, and with that role you get certain rights. And with the rights, you go to Marathon, and Marathon now gets the rights. And so we run Marathon at uh, 127.0.0.1, so you can't get to it directly. You have to go through the uh, authenticator. All, all those tricks, uh, as I said, are very flexible. You can do uh, whatever you want. That's what the uh, authenticator looks like. This is what Marathon looks like. Have you ever seen it? The DCS people? Yeah. And you can still bypass it. Yeah. You can get to it. Um, we run it uh, named Why? Why? Why, why are we looking into stopping it? Well, except for one, one technical constraint is that uh, when we installed this version, there was a huge warning that they were going to discontinue the UI of Marathon. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how they're going to do that if DCS just is a router to the interface. But, okay, let's assume that they're going to uh, stop the UI of this. But you can, you can see a couple of things here. As, um, uh, we're running about 153 instances on this, uh, in this environment. 15 are suspended, 2 are delayed. Well, delayed as in they, don't, they are deployed at the moment. And suspended means uh, they're probably doing something wrong and I suspended them. <laughs> and usually they have alerting so they find out that it's doing something wrong and that it's not running. So they, um, they'll find out what's, what's happening there. It's not true. This is the OTA environment, the dev environment. Yeah? So we do the same thing on Prot. But <laughs> and I'll be a bit more than I'll, I'll tell them at least that I do this, but I do this one. Now. <laughs> and you see all kinds of abbreviations that I have um, no idea what they mean. Uh, if you want to know what they mean, ask Robert Jan. And there are, as you can see, in FLF 28 applications running, whatever it may be. Yeah. Uh, this is about half the screen, so it's one under 50 running. Uh, and if you calculate all those numbers, you get to 80, so about uh, another 80 are down, uh, down here. Uh, lots of it's robotics. It would say, okay, you're running 150 applications in, in dev, how many are you running in production? I would say 150. <laughs> that sounds a bit strange, you would expect more in dev than in prod, but robotics doesn't have to have everything in dev. They have a lot in production uh, that they don't have in development. So they run more, it sounds a bit strange, but to develop a robot, to, uh, everybody is familiar with robotics? I mean, I'm not talking about, a, 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 we have a robot these days, I found out yesterday that we have a robot in the, if when you enter the, the, the bank, there's a robot, and I thought it was just for fun, I thought it was just a, but it's actually a robot, you can, if you enter the bank, you have an appointment with me, you go to the robot and you say, I have an appointment with Mr. Lloyd, and then it will call me. So I got a phone call from a robot. strange number, I said, there's somebody here to, for, for you to visit, and uh, 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 are you coming to pick him up now, or in five minutes, or in 15 minutes? That <laughs> 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 was, was the robot, it was uh, quite funny. So I, I picked him up and he said, yeah, I, I went to the robot. But that, that, that's a different <laughs> robot, right? That's a different robot. That's, this robot I'm talking about is the, 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 the automated stuff. We get a lot of, we get a message in, an email. People, people are sending an email, and that email have to be, has to be opened, and then somebody reads it there and types in the numbers over there. People are doing that. And and and, and I'm dark in the bound in a dynamic omgeving. Yeah? <laughs> 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 talk to Noor. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so we've we bought some a product that does all that stuff for them. And then we kick out a lot of 150 people from the local banks, as we call them. Uh, so it's not very nice. Anyway, they, they are running an environment where um, every department can have their own robot environment. And they build the robots, so you only need in dev, you need the, the people who build the robots. And then they go to production for Spiral and uh, well. <coughs> Again, I have no clue what they do. So it's not my thing. Uh, this is what traffic looks like. Traffic, I should say, in uh, good Swedish. <laughs> traffic. So you hear Swedish, aren't you? Traffic. Yeah, but it's uh, the, the, the A and the E are together uh, in, yeah. the, in the logo, so it's uh, A and A, right? Traffic? Traffic. Yeah, traffic. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. Um, I've, I've just selected, uh, I've selected a marathon. I can also do static routing, but we don't use that, but it's a selected marathon. Um, if, if I don't type in something there, it will say there are too many front ends and back ends. Um, so I just typed in one of the applications, BWF. 
and BWF is exposed to the customer. Apparently, we have two versions running. One is called BWF Service A, one is called BWF Service APT, whatever that may be. Uh, so if you access this one, you get to these systems on those ports. If you're familiar with Marathon, you know, in the GUI, in the UI, you can see, if you click on the in BWF, you click on that instance of BWF, you'll find that it's running on two systems and it's running on those two ports. So, question. Yes. You use this as well for your internal uh, service discovery? Yes. Okay. Yes. As, as opposed to? Well, in, in our case, we use laser DNS and, and we also use traffic, but only for external stuff. Okay. So, um, yeah, mainly because uh, traffic is HTTP yeah. only. And uh, yeah, we have, we have some other stuff where we maybe web socket and stuff. Or, or That's what it's really good. I need that. As you saw maybe on the previous sheet, there's a gRPC on, uh, was on there. So we yeah. did a test on, uh, on gRPC. Okay. Uh, traffic can do that. Cool. Yeah. The ones that we wrote ourselves cannot do that. That's why we're moving to, uh, to more. Uh, um, but yeah, we, if, in Mesh Marathon, you don't have the, the Mesh of DNS, so you don't have the server discovery at all. You have to have an external form of server discovery. Okay. So your databases are, are not going through this email? Exactly. They, they are in a different uh, environment. Okay. That's because we're a bank and we have a central uh, managed uh, database. Uh, department, which is uh, also 150 people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and they deliver services you would never expect. Huh? Like uh, backup, for instance, of a database you don't want to be backed up. And it's going to cost you money, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the database on that side. Having said that, is that we are moving to Azure and AWS, maybe in, uh, in the near future. We don't have a contract with AWS yet, uh, with the bank. But we do have a contract with uh, Azure, so we are, we are already running in, in Azure. But if you're going to move your application to Azure, you want to have the database as close to your application as possible. So you want to have your database in Azure as well. And of course, IT Infra is not going to provide databases in Azure, so we are moving to our own databases. We're moving away from IT Infra databases to our own databases as well. And uh, at the moment, we have one database running, it's called Cockroach. I'm um, not sure if you're familiar with Cockroach, but Cockroach is a Postgres database, you probably know Postgres, mm -hmm. but it has the advantage that it can run on multiple data centers. So we have an instance on-prem, we have an instance in Azure, so well, two in Azure, but one in uh, Northern Europe and one in Western Europe. And of course, Western Europe is in the North and Northern Europe is in the West. Yeah, okay. So Northern Europe is, I think, the regions are I, it's, it's, yeah. I, I never know which one is which, but uh, we have two regions, uh, Northeastern, uh, North Europe and uh, Western Europe. So we have a database that spans all the, all the environments. If you want to put your application on-prem, you can talk to the nodes on-prem. If you want to talk, have your application in Azure, in, in Northern Europe, then you can put them in Northern Europe and have to talk to them directly to uh, Again, a trick we use in, in, in Marathon is where we provide a location in a, an attribute and you can pick it up. So you can say, I want to uh, connect to the database with a connect string of something, 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 dollar, accolade opener, location, accolade sluiter, and then you connect to your um, local environment. So this is what traffic looks like. Um, well, and this is uh, how we access, uh, of course, the, 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 don't look at the picture, only look at the, uh, the URL <laughs> up there, where it says star, as I said, dot apps dot ota, minus ota dot kwx and howbank dot nl, and this is the service I just showed you on the previous sheet, so on the previous sheet you'll find that uh, fbx minus bwf minus services minus a dot apps ota dot translates to those two systems mm -hmm. and of course there you have your url and lucky for me i typed it in and something came up <laughs> yeah? I, it, most of the services give you json back if you put in the right url and of course i haven't got a clue which urls i have to type in so this one, I was lucky. So that's why it's on the sheet. Don't look at the contents, just look at the... And by the way, I, I cut off some, some stuff which is maybe um, Rabobank specific, so it's... Uh, <laughs> what's here is uh, not very interesting. The... Um, yeah, I'm looking at my watch, but not because of the time, but um, as I said, we have a new set of applications that will go live soon. I was typing this sheet yesterday, and when I was typing the sheet, my mail popped up and it said, we're going live tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. 
So which is exactly now. <laughs> they are going live at the moment. With a, with so your a phone didn't ring? So no, no, I told him I was here and somebody else is on standby. <laughs> and he said, why do I, have a, do, do I have to be on uh, standby? Because the platform will run. It's your application that won't run, but the platform will run. So, but they asked for somebody to be on. It's, it's uh, the well, application, they come from Maps here. They, <laughs> I don't feel comfortable so running in this office. Actually, they, will, they, will, they are going live as we speak at the moment. I hope they're already live because if, if they start at 8.30 p.m., I hope they should be live at 8.31 p.m. Yeah, and not at 8.50 uh, p.m. Uh, but they have a set of new requirements. And one of the new requirements is that they need an overlay network. And uh, Macy's Marathon does not have an overlay network. So we need something else. We're going to look into something else. What are we going to look into? Well, QBE, there's no bit, the, 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 the whole thing, and of course what we choose is uh, DCOS. <laughs> what else? This is, is flexible, go on Java, I can, uh, do I have to go to my sheets again? Uh, <laughs> I hope uh, it's, uh, it's good. So we are going to move to DCOS. Are there uh, alternatives? Well, I put some question marks there and didn't put any alternatives there. Um, anybody know an alternative? <laughs> A good alternative? <laughs> We heard somebody talk about Kubernetes, which is <laughs> stuff that is... Nomad. Nomad. Uh, no, we can't run Nomad on... Uh, PCF. We could, P PCF. We could run PCF, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take your mother leave. <laughs> the PCF department in, uh, in our bank has, uh, has, has um, at least three problems that, uh, that, that, that prevent us from going there. Uh, one is that um, it's stateless REST services only, which basically means you do a request, you never know where you're coming out, it could be there, it could be there, it could be any of the, uh, the environments that they run, but it will be a different one on the next call. And we have some sticky applications, you have to go to the same one every time, so we need sticky sessions. Traffic can give you sticky sessions, together with Mason Marathon it can give you st sticky sessions, so at least we can run and we can provide sticky sessions. If, if, the, if the, the, the application goes down, your, um, um, your sticky session obviously will disappear. That's not a problem, it's not a huge problem, but it will give load on different back, uh, background systems. So we don't want it. So we have, that's one. Second is, uh, they don't run Docker. They have something called PKS, where you can run a Kubernetes environment. They will run some sort of Docker but they don't run Docker environment. So this application that's going live at the moment is a Docker uh, container, a very simple Docker container, containing a Tomcat application, six gigabytes for CPU uh, requirement. It's not very much, but on PCF, you're, not, you're allowed to do a maximum of one gig. So it will start up, and somewhere in the middle of the startup, it will be <laughs> PCF, and then it will start up again, and it will never finish. I, sa I said three things, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> Sticky sessions, uh, something with Docker, and there was something else, uh, because we don't like the people. That's, um, no, we do <laughs> like the people, that's not a problem, because it's my previous colleague with whom I started this, uh, this whole project. <laughs> no, it's, um, uh, the applications have to be very close to the database. Online applications are dataless. Think about this. The online, online application, so your, your app and your, is the only thing they do is they, you get a, re, uh, a request in and a REST call in, they go out, do some more REST calls, get some information and pass the information back to you. So the only thing they do is some, some formatting. Yeah. But the whole um, no, online yeah. environment is dataless. Awesome. So they don't have a database problem. And we do have a database problem. We want to keep your mortgages as long as possible in the most safe database <laughs> that we can think of so you will... <laughs> Pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Small question, the, the network overlay uh, demand, what's the main uh, requirement driving uh, this separation? This, uh, this new application, it runs um, um, Hazelcast, and uh, the way that they do it is that you have, say, two instances of the application, you need at least two instances of the application, and of course, we don't want to run the, the, the two instances on the same node, so they have a host name unique constraint. They run the two different um, um, hosts, but they run Docker. And the Docker environment on this node will give you exactly the same IP address as the Docker on this node. So the application doesn't know about the host IP address, it knows about the Docker IP address, and it will register in the database with this IP address, 
it will register with A, the same IP address. Yeah. So yeah. they can't find each other. There's, there's, there's a couple of solutions. One is to, to not do the, uh, help me here, uh, the, 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 the uh, Docker mm -hmm, something, yeah, but to do the minus net uh, thing, so you get the host, ah, the, 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 the host and the IP address. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. net or bridge mode. Uh, but that's not a solution because you can't run on my platform with that. That would mean that if you if you you run Hazelcast on port uh, 5201 or something, then you will have to manage that another application will not run on 5201. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, a nightmare basically. Uh, so we need a, an overlay, and in this US you get a, a network, an overlay network where every <laughs> node has a different subnet. So every node will definitely have a different IP address, and every application on that node will have a different IP address. So you'll absolutely know for sure that if you run... This new environment is going to run something like... Uh, oh, damn. Uh, it's going to be bigger than the, the environment that we have at the moment. Yeah, so uh, they, they will run more, more applications on, on the nodes. They will have a new constraint. So they have their own infrastructure. They cannot run on the app and the, uh, the infra or the, uh, the, the robotics nodes. They will have to run on a different set of nodes. But they have a, a, a requirement for a huge amount. Uh, uh, so we need the, uh, the overlay of the, uh, the different IP addresses. <coughs> well, that's it. <laughs> <laughs>